Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the 2023 commencement ceremony of Dakota Wesleyan University graduates.
The one thing you didn't know was how to work the microphone. As we begin our time together, let us pray. God, you are the great teacher who guides us all as students of life lived in faith. Since before the written word, you have walked with us in our struggles and in our celebrations. It was you bursting old wineskins with new wine on the mount. It was you feeding the multitudes with your words on the plain. It is you who are the light that is passed from generation to generation in the journey of life. It is you walking with these graduates as we bless them in your name. Continue to walk with these graduates as we bless them in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 2023 Dakota Wesleyan University Commencement Ceremony. My name is Dan Kittle, and I have the honor of serving as the president here of DWU. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and my colleagues and the faculty and staff, I extend a warm welcome to the families, friends, and distinguished guests who have joined us today. And to you, class of 2023, today is a celebration of what you have accomplished. We gather to honor you as well as wish you the very best as we send you off to your next adventures. And graduates, you are entering a distinguished group of alumni that reach back to our founding nearly 140 years ago. In our first commencement ceremony on June 24, 1886, we graduated eight students. W.G. Moulton, Carrie Rogers, W.H. Dudley, Nellie Smith, Margaret Edgerton, O.E. Brownie, Alice Chenard, and Ernest Teachner. Their names were read, they likely came forward and were handed a diploma, and then their names were recorded in the permanent history of the university. Today, Keeping in that same rich tradition, your names will be read, you will come forward, be hooded, and handed a diploma. And your name and the degrees you have earned will be entered into the roles of DWU history. Graduations are also significant milestones for the entire university community, as they mark a moment to celebrate the graduates as well as the mission of our institution. Our mission is rooted in the values of learning, leadership, faith, and service. We see that mission come alive through the work of our faculty and staff, from the commitment of our alumni and friends, and ultimately, that mission is brought to life through our students. We challenge our students to learn and lead. We provide intentional faith exploration and meaningful service opportunities. As graduates, you have met those challenges and realized those opportunities and we are extremely pleased to gather in celebration of your achievements. Graduates, when you walk across this stage alone today, you understand that this celebration is shared with others who have meaningfully contributed to your journey. The faculty seated beside you, the staff and the audience, your family and friends, they've contributed to your journey, and today they are so very proud of you. As you share this moment with those you love, I also invite you to take a moment to feel how you have bonded with DWU, its people and our beloved traditions. As you prepare to leave us, I remind you that this is a place that you can always call home. So keep Dakota Wesleyan close to your heart, not only taking what you've learned here as you go on to your professional duties and graduate studies, but also the values of this community. Keep learning, leading, practicing your faith, and serving. Keep those values close as you search for meaning and purpose. And while life will keep you busy, I ask that you not lose touch with the DWU community. Gather as alumni, come back to campus, follow what's happening at your alma mater, and remain connected and committed to this place. 
because you are not leaving our community today. You are arriving as members of a new DW group. You can now proudly call yourself an alumnus of the DW community. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Joe Reut, the Provost and Chief Academic Officer of Dakota Wesley University. Joe will describe the importance of the traditions of graduation, including some of the symbols and rituals that are present in our celebration today. Again, welcome to our guests, and congratulations to our graduates. Commencement celebrates the attainment of academic degrees and, more importantly, the knowledge and abilities that we are confident a degree from Dakota Wesleyan represents. Commencement is a time of tradition and formality. The robes that faculty and university officers wear today are known as regalia and connect the academy to its long history. Robes and hoods denote degrees. Braids and pins indicate honors while colors identify academic disciplines and university alma maters. This ceremony commemorates the growth of our graduates and their accomplishments, both as students and as human beings. We thank all who are gathered today in recognition of the graduating class of 2023. President Kittle, the Board of Trustees has authorized you to confer honorary degrees, and today you will confer one upon the following candidate in recognition of notable achievement and service in her field. Betty Lou Oldenkamp, Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. I will now read a portion of the citation recognizing Betty Oldenkamp with the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. Betty Oldenkamp is a true South Dakotan. She grew up in the small prairie community of Murdo under what she calls the watchful eyes of a large family and everyone else in town. After high school, she moved to Mitchell to attend Dakota Wesleyan University, graduating in 1982 with a degree in psychology. She went on to do graduate work at Northern State University. Betty began her professional career in a small nonprofit agency working with adults who have developmental disabilities. Seven years of working as a direct support professional had a distinct influence on her work and administrative responsibilities. Betty then served as the cabinet secretary for the South Dakota Department of Human Services under Governors Bill Janklow and Mike Rounds. There, she oversaw one of the largest state agencies in the executive branch, including state institutions, five community-based divisions, and the administration of the entire department. In total, she dedicated 15 years of her career to public service. Later in 2006, Betty was appointed president and CEO for Lutheran Social Services of South Dakota, a position she held until her retirement in December of 2021. Betty was twice presented a Governor's Award for Employee Excellence and has received Distinguished Service Awards from the Rocky Mountain Council of Community Mental Health Centers and from Dakota Wesleyan University, where she served us 12 years as a Board of Trustee member. In September of 2022, Betty was selected as the first recipient of the Compassion Project's Wing of Compassion Award. Betty currently lives in Sioux Falls. She enjoys spending time with extended family, shopping and dinner with friends, tending her flower garden in the summer, going to concerts and theater performances, and traveling to warm, sunny places to escape from winter. One of her favorite things remains watching a summer sunset on the open horizon of the prairie. Betty is described as being driven by her huge heart and love for people. She believes in the power of presence. Betty, Betty has said of her work, we often talk about our work as walking alongside people during difficult times in their lives, and that is exactly what we do. Betty, in recognition of your contributions and the influence you have had on social services for decades, it is our great privilege to present you with an honorary doctorate of Humane Letters.
Thank you, Dr. Kittle. You know, it was a few weeks ago that I got the phone call from Dr. Kittle, and I thought it was just about coming to do the commencement address today. Um, I found myself speechless uh, when he shared with me that I had been selected to receive this honorary degree. I just, I have to express my sincerest gratitude and appreciation for those that um, made the effort to put my name forward and for those who actually deemed me worthy of this honor. It truly is one of the most significant recognitions that I've received. And I share this recognition with the incredible people that worked alongside me and shared my passion to make life just a little easier or maybe just a little better for people who were going through a difficult time in their lives. And I also want to recognize my family. Several of them are here with me today for their support and encouragement, really in all aspects of my life. So over the years, um, I have done quite a bit of public speaking. And, and uh, when you work in uh, government, other than being the governor probably, and when you work in nonprofits, you write your own speeches. Um, so my process with that has always been to just kind of let things roll around in my head for a while. And then, you know, as the day gets closer, it's like, okay, I better make some notes, get that in writing. So that's just another way for me to say that um, I practice the skill of procrastination. <laughs> Gotten really good at it over the years. Um, but then a few weeks ago, I get this letter, you know, that's like, we want to invite your family and send us, you know, your invitation list. And we'll get you a cap and gown. And by the way, we need the title of your commencement address. What? <laughs> Title of a commencement address? I haven't written a word yet. Well, that did put me into a bit of a panic. So I started making out a list of all these different titles. And after a while, I, I kind of settled on um, a perfect storm for a liberal, liberal arts experience. And then a few days ago, I decided I should really get busy and you know write this speech. I looked at this title and I thought, good Lord, what were you thinking? <laughs> These people are celebrating a milestone in their life and they're starting a new chapter. And you want to talk about a perfect storm? Hmm, how uplifting and encouraging is that? Not much. But unfortunately, it is kind of a nasty world that you're stepping into. We are in this point of great polarization and divisiveness, however you want to describe it. There's this sense that my values and my perspectives are the correct ones. And if you don't share them, then you're a bad person. And then we have this continuous, vast stream of information that you need to filter and determine what is fact, if there are true facts anymore, and what are alternative facts. You know, all of this is kind of what I characterize when I think of the perfect storm that you're walking into. A combination of events or things that produce a powerful result. Now granted, most often that powerful result is something bad, but I'm hoping that this perfect storm ends with a rainbow. Now no promises on the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. Um, but what I want each of you to know is that a liberal arts education, and especially the iteration known as the Wesleyan experience, has equipped you not only to be strong and resilient in the face of adversity, but to be a leader and to care about the well-being of those around you. You would not be sitting out there in a cap and gown if you had not demonstrated the academic ability to master your required courses. But the Wesleyan experience is far more than academic rigor. It's the experience of expanding your mind, exploring new things, questioning everything, and sharing this experience with others that were once strangers and now are forever friends. As Dr. Um, Tuttle said, I did grow up in a small town. And in that small town, diversity at the time was probably defined as farm kid and town kid, Catholic or Protestant. <laughs> but when I came to Wesleyan, 
i was exposed to people from all types and sizes of communities people with a variety of racial ethnic and religious backgrounds as well as students from other countries whose first language was in english so when you intentionally combine a diverse student body with a collaborative experiential learning environment you know what happens people discover that they don't need to fear someone who looks different speaks with an accent or worships a different god you will spend a significant portion of time working with people that have a life experience that is different from yours and with people you may not agree with or even like but you can still value who they are as a person and respect their humanness your mind and your heart recognize that we are all just people and we are all worthy of love acceptance and respect as you transition to this next chapter of your life the capacity to accept and respect people even though you disagree with them on an issue will help you to erode the divisiveness that we face you know one of the things that i have come to appreciate about my wesleyan experience is that it really did open my mind and it helped cultivate those neural pathways that support critical thinking and innovation the exposure that you get to multiple disciplines and learning modalities helps you develop that capacity to approach a problem from a variety of perspectives and come up with any number of solutions to that problem well i was a student here at dakota wesleyan one of the other things that I discovered was that learning in a collaborative fashion produced better results and was way more fun than doing it alone. Well, I carried that forward into my career experience. And um, while I was smart and I had a few skills, a few strengths, I wasn't good at everything. I quickly learned to surround myself with people that compensated for my weaknesses as a team we were always stronger and better than we were as individuals. You know, um, it's probably no surprise when, well, I guess you can't see my gray hair because I have a cap on, but <laughs> it's probably no surprise that my formal education all, uh, all occurred in that pre-Google area, you know, back when we had to use encyclopedias and dictionaries. Um, I'm really going to date myself with this one. I grew up with just one network TV channel. No remote co control was needed in our house. <laughs> and maybe because there were 12 kids, and so we just got to change channels later in life. But anyhow, the point of this is you don't have just one trusted source for news and information. You have the Internet with a variety of search engines. You have multiple network news options. And then you add the unregulated sources like blogs and podcasts and social media feeds. You know, it becomes really hard to discern what information to believe and what information to use to inform your decisions and actions. But again, the Wesleyan experience has prepared you for this. You've had technology embedded in your learning experience. You know how to research and verify data sources. And you've explored your values and your faith by questioning and exploring and not blindly accepting what someone puts before you as truth and fact. Use your values, use your beliefs, and put some common sense along with that. Use your technology skills. Filter all the information that is coming at you. Well, I don't know about you guys, I'm a little warm. Maybe you've uh, drifted off as I've been rambling along, so I'm just going to um, give you a few takeaways that maybe will help you face the perfect storms that um, come your way in the future. First and foremost, accept and respect all people for their humanness. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Compensate for those weaknesses. You can't be a master of everything. Keep learning and be open to innovation and new ideas. Know your values and let them be integral to your critical thinking and decision making. Today is a milestone 
and tomorrow is a new beginning. I hope you're excited for the futures and all that is ahead of you. I hope you savor this experience, not just today, but all of the Wesley ex Wesleyan experience. I am truly honored and humbled beyond words to be with you today. In closing, I want to share with you something that um, it was just a little clipping out of a, a book I read one time, but it um, was on my office bulletin board for most of my career. It was to remind me that I often need a little push, sometimes a big push, um, to soar. And also to remi remind me that as a leader, sometimes my job was to push others. So this is from Even Eagles Need a Push by John McNally. Apollinaire said, come to the edge, but it's too high. Come to the edge, but we might fall. Come to the edge. So they came, and he pushed them, and they flew. Congratulations to each one of you, and may you soar like eagles. God's blessings to you.
It's my privilege this afternoon to present the Clark Award for Teaching Excellence. In a moment, I'll ask Ms. Megan Luther to join us on stage to present the award. But I will begin by reading citation for this year's award winner. The Clark Award for Teaching Excellence, now in its 26th year, was established in 1997 through a generous gift from John and Vicki Clark. This award, which now boasts a companion award for Dakota Wesleyan staff members, is presented annually at Dakota Wesleyan University's commencement ceremony in the spring. The Clark Award is conferred upon a full-time Dakota Wesleyan faculty member who consistently demonstrates excellence in each of the following three areas. Excellence in teaching, excellence in serving the needs of students, and excellence in service to the university and community. Students, administrators, and fellow faculty members nominate faculty members for this honor. In reviewing the nominations submitted on behalf of this year's recipient, along with past peer reviews and teaching evaluations, it is abundantly clear that this year's recipient is richly deserving of this honor. With respect to the first criterion, excellence in teaching, I would note several things. The professor is enthusiastic about teaching and serving students. The professor is dedicated to staying current in a discipline that is changing extremely rapidly. They are also committed to working continually to improve their ability to facilitate learning. With respect to staying current in their discipline, this faculty member's professional development consists largely of mastering new tools and technologies on an ongoing basis so that they are able to share their learning with students so that students are always learning the technologies they will need to be successful in the professional workforce. With respect to continually improving their teaching, this professor has been an early and successful adopter of block scheduling, and this has prompted them to productively question what they're doing in the classroom and how they can do it better and more effectively. In reviewing students' comments about this professor's teaching, two themes emerge consistently. One is this professor's practical orientation. Indeed, one might say that for this professor, knowing without being able to do is not worth much. A second is the collaborative nature of this professor's courses in which students regularly report learning from one another as much as from the faculty member. The following student comments illustrate these themes. This course was very hands-on. In class, we would learn the required skills necessary for an assignment, and then we would do the assignment using the same things we learned in class. I lear I've learned a lot in this class that I anticipate using professionally. I appreciated how the professor would show us how to use something, and then we would go and do the assignments with what we learned in class. By far my favorite course in all my years of going to school. The knowledge I gained from this course applies to the real world more than anything else I have been taught. A recent Dakota Wesleyan graduate put it this way, I attribute my career success to the down-to-earth, forward-thinking learning experience facilitated by this professor that more than prepared me to be successful in a field by creating assignments that enabled me to apply and strengthen classroom topics and techniques through unique, real-world, creative briefs that also challenge and flex my critical thinking skills. <clears throat> This professor's unique approach of in-class design challenges that students were requ required to complete in class is unequivocally the reason I have been so successful in the extremely fast-paced world in which I work. With respect to the collaborative learning environment, students share the following. I like being able to communicate with the class by presenting the assignments that we worked on over the weekend and hearing feedback from our classmates. This helped me become more creative. Presenting our work in front of the class every week to receive critiques and feedback from our professors and our peers is daunting, but it ultimately makes us better. Criticism is something that, as both designers and human beings, we have to learn to deal with. The Clark Award's second criterion, excellence in serving the needs of students, explicitly references holding students to high expectations and challenging students to expand their learning. One of the more noteworthy themes in the comments that students make about this professor's courses is their articulation of the sense of agency and efficacy that comes from successfully meeting difficult challenges. 
students write as follows. Although this class was extremely time consuming, I loved it. Many times I felt stressed or worried about getting a project done, but it was all worth it. Another student says, I hated this class for two months because I wasn't very good at making graphics, but I kept coming because I enjoyed the vibes of everyone in the class. I actually wound up looking forward to coming to this class. This is the best, best course I have taken so far because it was simultaneously fun and challenging. With respect to the third criterion of the Clark Award, service to the university and community, this faculty member is highly respected among his colleagues and extensively involved in service activities in the life of the university both on and off campus. This faculty member's service includes working on a variety of faculty, faculty committees, serving on a multitude of search committees, and serving as faculty advisor to the design club. This faculty member has also overseen multiple partnerships, one with Innovative Systems and another with the city of Mitchell. He's currently exploring a third similar partnership. He also serves as a member of a local church and as a coach and supporter of area youth sports. Will you please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Clark Award for Teaching Excellence, Professor of Digital Media and Design, Kyle Herges. The significance of today is clear, marking and celebrating the moment of graduation for our class of 2023. What should also be evident to you today is that we do and so intentionally and as a community. So earlier this year, we asked graduating seniors to identify the faculty or staff member who has played a particularly significant role in their Dakota Wesleyan experience. The individual they identified will present them with an academic hood in today's ceremony. This ritual draws on the long academic tradition of bestowing hoods upon graduates in recognition of their accomplishments and as a way of acknowledging these critical relationships between the students and their faculty and staff. And also so well, today is most certainly yours, graduates. I join you in recognizing all of the faculty and staff that have supported you in reaching this milestone occasion. At this time, would all faculty and staff of DWU please rise so that we can show you our appreciation and gratitude for your work. Thank you. Before we begin recognizing this year's graduates, I'd like to spend a few moments recognizing one student who has successfully completed the LifeQuest certificate on our campus this past year, Daily Remy. <laughs> Daily has successfully completed the Dakota Wesleyan's Quest program. She has averaged three hours per week of community service, was a DWU campus ministry, and loved being a student member for the DWU women's volleyball team. Daly completed two project skills internships and she is currently employed as a deli assistant for County Fair Foods. She lives independently and loves having a place that is all her own. Daly has enjoyed her time at DWU learning and meeting so many great people and she will particularly miss being a part of the DWU volleyball team. Daly's success has come from her ambition to learn, willingness to experience new things, and her desire to be independent. Congratulations, Daily Remy.
We will now begin conferring degrees. Graduates will be called in order of the program. President Kittle, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled, having successfully completed programs of study offered by Dakota Wesleyan University, and having been recommended by both the faculty and the Board of Trustees, are qualified in all respects to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts degree please stand and proceed to the stage. Noah John Archer. Joanne Cooper. I will now recognize the Associate of Science graduates with our Learn and Earn program in PEER who are unable to attend today's ceremony. However, they were previously recognized at a December ceremony. Andrew Jace Holland. JC Rose Edema. Molly Elizabeth Nyhart with distinction. Jada Pearl Tibbs. Brenda Lorena Velasquez Padilla with distinction. Talia Noel Williams. I'm supposed to ask them to stand, but they're just getting back to their chairs, so we'll give them a second. <laughs> Now to our recipients of the associate degree, will you please stand? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University and the State of South Dakota, I do by here confirm upon you an associate degree according to the department in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will all candidates for the bachelor's degree please proceed to the stage as your row is dismissed by the junior marshals. President Kittle, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates whom, upon completion of all degree requirements, are qualified in all respects to be awarded a bachelor's degree. Please hold your applause until all degrees have been conferred. We will begin with the Bachelor of Arts degree. Sarah Jane Burkle with merit. Grace Colleen Lewis, summa cum laude. Corbin Allen Kramer, cum laude. Maggie Delaney Katner. Braxton Casey Wilhelm.
Wyatt Joseph Baldoff, magna cum laude. Allison K. Jamison, summa cum laude. Alice Catherine Schleich, summa cum laude. Alexis Brooke Thompson, magna cum laude. Emily K. Beese, summa cum laude. Brianna Lynn Dermeyer, cum laude. Abigail Rose Ferris, magna cum laude. Zachariah Anthony Fieber, cum laude. Bailey Madison Field. Skyler Sage Leon Grinstainer. Maxwell Jasper Helgerson. Mary Catherine Kelly, summa cum laude. Megan Grace McCorkle Nelson, magna cum laude. Madeline Elizabeth Neely. Hope Victoria Schulte, magna cum laude. Amber Taryn Fiegert, cum laude. Brecken Lee Bullard. Hayden Joseph Dinger. Kobe Curtis Carr, summa cum laude. Wyatt Leonard Hunt. Gabrielle Marie Warwick, summa cum laude. Gavin David Hanna. Bree Janelle Somerville. Garrett Ray Detterman. Lane Jean Lewis. Andrea Joelle Holt, cum laude. Okay. 
Megan Ann Daffern, cum laude. We will now recognize the Bachelor of Science graduates. Kasia May Ohayon, magna cum laude. Rin Rene Ostis, summa cum laude. Madeline Grace Reiner, magna cum laude. Jamin Jeffrey Arend, magna cum laude. Adam John DeYoung, summa cum laude. Jacob Carl Oxus. Matthew Allen Schwarzler, magna cum laude. Jacob Lorenzo Zamora. Kyler Bixby Haverson. Nathan Ryan McKee. Sydney Marie Mucky, magna cum laude. Dawson Robert Pentakoff, cum laude. Hannah Harriet Reef, magna cum laude. Drew Robert Kitchens. Hope Jennifer Bartman, cum laude. Madison K. Wibben, summa cum laude. Carter Justin Fredrickson, magna cum laude. Reagan Ashley Gerlock, magna cum laude. Lila Ann Gronseth, magna cum laude. Taylor Blake McCart, cum laude. Shay Allen Sari. Tyra Shimata, cum laude. Marielle Renee Buckland, magna cum laude. Dikira Deanne Grassrope, magna cum laude. Rebecca Maud Matson. Virginia Lynn Alvis. Karen May Gerstenecker. Brooke Marie Johnson.
Sabrina Kathleen Lickis. Mariah Jeanette Glow, summa cum laude. Tessa Jane Hertel. Cassidy Kristen Johnson, magna cum laude. Ashley Marie Zimmer, cum laude. Darby Lynn Deffenbaugh, magna cum laude. Frederico Damien Ducini, cum laude. Lucas Paishal Trinidad, summa cum laude. Abby Lane Erbigkeit. Haley Ann Linky, magna cum laude. Kate C. Bolander, magna cum laude. Drew Robert Cole. Kobe James Larson. Leah Marie Marshall, magna cum laude. Jericho William Martinez. Aaron Rene Moncur, magna cum laude. Morgan Rose Carr, summa cum laude. Grant Douglas Pierce. Dante Robert Bryce. Madeline Rachel Else, summa cum laude. Elijah Nathaniel Story. Troy Daniel Wilhelm, cum laude. Destiny Patrice Brockhouse, magna cum laude. Carter Jonathan Janig, magna cum laude. Werner Sorensen, magna cum laude. Amy Lynn Erbigkeit. Excuse me, Allie Lynn Erbigkeit. Daniel Joe Burns.
Tracy Ann Defer. Sydneya Jivana Dunn, summa cum laude. Lexi Arlene Leishner, magna cum laude. Avani Elaine Long. Sydney Renee Matkey. <laughs> Taylor Lynn Reif, summa cum laude. Maxwell Laverne Schoenfelder, magna cum laude. Talisa Michelle Smith. <laughs> Abby Gail Von Eye. Samuel Ryan Henderson, cum laude. Caitlin Jean Warren. Annika Joe Vermillion, magna cum laude. Levin Leanne Bent, magna cum laude. Ryan James Norsha. Carter John Max, summa cum laude. Brianna Lynn Paeshek. Amara Bori Prom. Mary Ellen Ryder. Trinity Lynn Schroeder, magna cum laude. Spend Jacob Slish. Tessa K. Jensen, magna cum laude. Bailey Lacey Nestor, summa cum laude. Peyton Scott Ferris, magna cum laude. Bailey June Thompson, summa cum laude. Yeah. 
Alexis Amanda Volker, summa cum laude. Alan Paul Mandala Kikwaki. Ryan James Kinsley. I will now recognize the bachelor's degree graduates who are unable to attend today's ceremony. Bachelors of Art, Sawyer Scott Schultz. And for the Bachelors of Science, Lisa Marie Anderson, Sigma Cum Laude. Tyler Jean Anderson. Tyus Eugene Arns. Katie Ray Gary. Amanda Hushik, cum laude. Courtney Naomi Crone. Damian Lee Lucas. Michaela Lee Oliver. Now, will all recipients of the bachelor's degree please stand? Well, you're already standing. <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University and the State of South Dakota, I do hereby confer upon you a bachelor's degree according to the department in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will the recipients of a bachelor's degree please move their tassels from the right to the left side of their mortarboards, officially signifying their graduation. Please join me in congratulating the bachelor's degree recipients. Please be seated. <laughs> President Kittle, I now have the privilege of presenting those candidates who, upon completion of all degree requirements, are qualified in all respects for the degree of Master of Arts, Masters of Athletic Training, and Masters of Business Administration. Please hold your applause until all degrees have been conferred. We will begin with Master of Arts graduates. Jason Thomas Rosima. Donald Jackson Rediger. Malik Ray Campbell. Anthony James De La Torre. Bridget Elizabeth Freudenberg. Stephanie Misha 
Gabel. Cody Ryan Jenkins. Morgan Renee Taft. Logan Kenneth Deedy. We will now recognize the Masters of Athletic Training graduates. Natalie Marie Gottlob. Ashley Marie Kapler Pruce. Jocelyn Ann Krause. Rebecca Ann Buholtz. Grace Madeline Imberry. Faith Dallas Tyler. We will now recognize the Masters of Business Administration graduates. Caleb Joseph Christ. Dina Renee Baca. Ryan Donovan. Christopher James Huber. Carrie Rose Jansen. Caroline D. Nyberg. Rick Allen Olivier. Eric A. Schroeder. Nicholas John Van Dam. Jude Morgan Birkinshaw. Bradley Aaron Hurst. Chandler Cole Fredrickson. Cole Arthur Schreiner. Jennifer R. Demovic Waggy. Benjamin Nelson McGee. Jacob Victor Schneider.
Rebecca Grinager Trevs. I will now recognize the master's degree graduate candidates who were unable to attend today's ceremony. Masters of Arts in Education, Kendra Karen Clark, Ethan Hunter Scott Davis, Luke Daniel Loudenberg, Cameron Allen McGarry, Allison Marie Nilsson, Luke Michael Zeman, and for the Masters of Business Administration, Hiroko Aku Tagawa, Tarek James Benton, Jada Lee Campbell, Caleb Skies Carmichael, Cole William DeBerg, Tanya Ray Epping, Joel Thomas Pierre Fitzgerald. Scott Allen Harmon, Megan Ray Hinker, Lisa Irvine, Michael Ray Johnson, Mark Andrew Calborn, Andrew Philip Kaiser, Karen C. Kidd, Cassie Ree O'Brien. Lamar Clay Oliver, Paul David Perez, Anna Marie Kelsey Pettit, Amanda Lamb Ross, Elizabeth Jeanette Shelton, Amy Lynn Pilam, Noah Aiden Buford Watson, and Dalton. Joseph Wilcoxon. <laughs> Candidates for the master's degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University and the State of South Dakota, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Master's of Arts, Master's of Athletic Training, and Master of Business Administration according to the department in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining hereto. Please join me in congratulating the master's degree recipients. Will all master's degree, bachelor's degree, and associate's degree recipients please rise again. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of the class of 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> you may be seated just for a few more moments here. At this time, to welcome you as alumni, I invite Jory Hansen, Director of Development, to the podium for the alumni welcome. Jory?
Good afternoon and congratulations to the class of 2023. Today is a special day as we gather here to celebrate your graduation and welcome you into the alumni community of Dakota Wesleyan University. It's an honor to stand before you today as you take the next steps into the world. As we celebrate your achievements, we must acknowledge the great legacy of Dakota Wesleyan, which is dated back to 1885. Today's graduating class has added to this legacy and DWU now has exceeded 20,000 alumni. Alumni who have become leaders in their communities and fields of work. Today, you join this accomplished group of individuals who have made a difference in the world. As you step into the next journey of your life, remember that you're not alone. You're part of a strong and supportive alumni community that is here to help you navigate the challenges and opportunities ahead. But beyond the practical benefits, being part of the Dakota Wesleyan University alumni community is a source of pride and inspiration. You are part of a legacy of excellence and achievement. And you have the opportunity to carry that legacy forward. No matter where your career path leads, you have the power to make a difference. And you have the support of fellow alumni to help you achieve these goals. Now remember, being alumni is not just about what you receive, but also what you can give back. As you progress in your career and in your life, remember to stay engaged with your alma mater and to support our mission. You can mentor current students, you can serve on advisory boards, donate to scholarships and special projects, or simply attend events and stay connected with fellow alumni. In closing, I want to congratulate all of you on your graduation and welcome you into the community of alumni at Dakota Wesleyan. You've accomplished so much already, and I'm confident that you will continue to achieve great things in the years to come. So go out, make your mark on the world, and always remember that you're always part of the Dakota Wesleyan University family. Congratulations. On behalf of Dakota Wesleyan University, I thank you for joining us to support and celebrate the graduates of the class of 2023. As we conclude our ceremony, I would ask that you please allow the platform party, the faculty, staff, and the graduates to recess to the South Plaza, which is out those doors, before exiting. Graduates, I would ask that you please follow the guidance of the junior marshals as you exit in an orderly fashion through the southern doors of the Corn Palace. As you exit, you will find the Dakota Wesleyan faculty have formed a corridor for you to walk through. Once you have made it through that corridor, please feel free to disperse throughout the area. Family and guests, please join us on the South Plaza for light refreshments and for pictures, photographs, etc. I now invite the Reverend Dr. Denise Van Meter to the podium for today's benediction. It is my honor as one of your campus pastors who has walked with so many of you for the past seven years to send you off with a final blessing. Would you please stand? Let us unite our hearts in prayer and entrust each other to the hands of the Lord. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice equality, and peace. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in this world so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. May your integrity be a gift to this world, and may the Spirit of God be with you always. 
And through it all, go in peace and take care of each other. Amen. Thank you.